What up, guys? This is Derek Larger, and you're watching Derek Larger Sports Talk. I'm here with my man, Jake Brock. How you doing, What's man? What's up, my man? Thanks for having me. <laughs> no problem, man. So, as I told you guys before, it's an, it's review day from the first round of the NFL draft. A lot of excitement, a lot of surprising uh, picks, I would say. Uh, definitely still hung over from that night because I'm still kind of happy about it. Uh, never been more excited about a first round of a draft in my life. So we're going to break it down, uh, some of the stuff that happened, a lot of the picks, especially our picks for this guy's Bengals and my Indianapolis Ah, oh, Come on now. <laughs> so um, before we get into the draft, uh, obviously a lot of moves with the Browns. The Browns had traded down and traded up, uh, getting three picks in the first round, which I'm sure they probably thought about uh, long and hard about that. But um, some interesting ones that we'll talk about. First one, obviously, a lot of people knew. Miles Garrett, first pick. Uh, you can disagree or agree with it. Um, me, personally, I would not have picked Miles Garrett first pick because I think there's a lot more football players versus athletes on this. But I think the reason why they picked him was because of the potential for a star in the sense of he was an athlete that – has the potential to be a great defensive player. <laughs> I feel like, I mean, the worst scenario of the Miles Garrett pick is he becomes the next Jadavian Clowney. He does not do anything the first couple years of his career. He gets hurt. Now, the upside, though, I mean, he could be one of the best defensive ends here next year, or maybe in the next couple years. You mean, you know, well, he, and it's he funny you tremendous. brought up Jadavian Clowney last year. He was really good, and when he exactly. stayed healthy, so exactly. it's like and, you know, I, and Miles Garrett's never been he had he's never had any injury history, so right. you know so that doesn't scare me. Obviously, they could have maybe traded out of the pick or done something else, but I feel like for Cleveland, they finally got their guy. They got the best, well, you know, overall option. player. You option. couldn't take you couldn't pass up on the opportunity yeah. to get somebody yeah. with that upside. Yeah. And the biggest one, and I think we both agree on this, the biggest pick of the night, Whew. Bears trade their their second and fourth round picks of this year and next year's first round pick to move up one spot to get Mitch one Trubisky. Spot. Wow. One spot. Now, I, my mind, we our minds were blown last night when we saw this because I was like, what did they give up to move up one spot not to mention, so let me just break this down. They broke, they got Mike Glennon for a three-year, $48 million contract. One year is guaranteed at $18 million. So it's not terrible, but you're still going to make Mitch Trubisky wait one year. And you gave up a first, third, and fourth round pick to get a quarterback that most people believe is shouldn't have even been picked in the first round. What's your thoughts on that? So my thoughts are... I mean, if they if Mitchell Trubisky becomes the next Matt Ryan or whatever quarterback, you, Aaron Rodgers, the Bears look tremendous. They, I mean, they look sharp. Now, if he doesn't become the quarterback that they think they will, this will haunt them. They had almost well, besides obviously Miles Garrett, they had you know you look down the list: Solomon Thomas, Jamal Adams, Marshall, even Mike, even other players any, like a uh, Mike Williams. Uh, and even John Ross's, or even other options at quarterback. Exactly. And they also spend so much money for Glennon in the offseason. Like, that just makes it, it makes like, no what, sense. Yeah, it feels like it makes now, no sense. Now, this me. is what I think. Mitchell Trubisky, he went to North Carolina 8-5 and five this year. 8-5 and five in North Carolina. I, obviously, the ACC is tough. Clemson, Florida State. Right. Now, obviously, he's from Menor, Ohio, out of, you know, Cleveland suburb. If Mitchell Trubisky goes to Ohio State, does he even start in, in any of his four years? I'm no, not, I don't, I don't think so. so. I don't think so. I don't think Especially so. Especially with the system they run. I feel like exactly. it's it's the – I feel people were intrigued by his completion percentage. His numbers weren't amazing, but his completion percentage was up in the high 60s. Yes. He was – pretty much consistent. He wasn't anything spectacular, but he wasn't terrible. And he's his size as a quarterback. That's why Cardale Jones was looked at as so well, because the mechanics weren't always there, but his size, his sure size made you think he could well, be Well, another thing about Cardale Jones is he beat, you know, Alabama, Oregon, Wisconsin. Who, ha who did Mitchell Trubisky ever beat? He got beat, by a, he got beat by a Virginia Tech team and literally threw – 
thirty percent um completion percentage and lost. I mean, a even against Stanford in his Rose Bowl, or not Rose Bowl in the bowl game, they I mean they got he got torched. I mean, it kind of obviously you know maybe they thought number three like maybe they thought the 49ers were going to take him. I don't know, but to trade up only one spot and, and give lose up that three much, picks that, for that that's, that's what I call as bad. Yeah. So we're in agreement on that. Uh, third pick, 49ers get Solomon Thomas. We expected that to happen. Uh, I give that a great A. Definitely was a great pick. Uh, Leonard Fournette going to the Jaguars. I see that as a B plus. It was a good. It was a good pickup. But uh, I don't think it's going to be too much. I mean, I'm a Colts fan. I don't think the Jaguars are going to use him very well, anyways. <laughs> but you know, and the big one for us being a part of the MAC. Corey Davis, the wide receiver out of Western Michigan, who is the all-time leading receiver in reception yards for college football. That's probably, would you say that's the reason why he got moved up so high? So the first thing I thought of is, where was, uh, they, I mean, obviously, in some mock drafts, I mean, the highest they had him was maybe, ah, uh, I think, honestly, I didn't even think he was a top-ten pick in any mock draft. Before. Right, So right. you think maybe they could have traded out and still got him, which kind of surprised me. Now, he will help. I think this is more about Mariota than anyone. Yeah. He will help Mariota. I mean, the only downside of this pick, in my opinion, is he dropped a lot of passes. In yes, college. that was his biggest dropped issue. Dropped a lot of passes. Dropped a lot of passes. He makes good ones, but... He does have that OBJ syndrome. You drop the ones that normally are easy, yeah. and but I think that's something you can address as, as long as he doesn't turn into a Nelson Aguilar yeah, who drops more sure. passes than yeah. any other receiver. Yeah. But hey, Mac, top five, hey, I, Mac. I will take it. Yeah. We'll take it. Uh, Jets getting Jamal Adams. A lot of people say that's probably the most complete pick of this first round. It was definitely a great pickup. A lot of people thought the Jets would go offense versus this, but I don't think any Jets fans are going to show up unhappy Jamal about Adams, it. Um, he might be the best player in the draft. We don't yeah, know. We don't know. We'll have to yeah. see. Uh, Mike Williams going to the Chargers was a good pickup because they need a consistent receiver. That's been the issue for the Chargers the last yeah. few years. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey was a surprise to me because most people thought Leonard Fournette was going to go to the Panthers because of the style of offense yeah. that they run. But now I think when I look deeper into this, I bet Cam Newton was looking at that and he was like, man, that's a great option for me. One thing about Christian McCaffrey is I call him a three-tool guy. Obviously, he can run the ball. And he ran in the power formation at Stanford. I mean, in mm -hmm. a phone booth. Yeah. He can play slot. And he can also, obviously, as a punt, kickoff return. Yeah. So he can do three things to help you in football games. Yes. I think and overall, that was yeah. that was why a lot of people rated him over Leonard Fournette because of his overall value, not just as a running back, but as a running back out of the backfield, as a receiver, as a return yes. man. Leonard Fournette, you're just going to get that basic style running back. I mean, that's not to say Christian McCaffrey is going to have a better career, but we'll see what happens. I think it was a good pick. Now we're getting into his team, the Bengals, pick John Ross, the ninth pick, the receiver out of Washington. Now my pick before this, I'll say this. I, I told him this yesterday. It reminds me a lot of T.Y. Hilton. Not a very big guy, but a speedy receiver outside the edge who, can who matches up with A.J. Green. You have a possession guy in A.J. Green, and you have a deep threat in John Ross that can cover the middle of the field. Uh, the biggest issue with him is he's had a few injuries, but I don't think that's going to be a big issue. But I think the biggest problem with him is, is a lot of times he does not cover routes very well. He often runs his own routes. I think they do that on purpose in Washington because of his ability to run. As all of you know, he's now had the fastest 40 time ever. Um, so I give it a B because of the upside to they did need a second receiver to go along with an aging AJ Green. Uh, what, what's your thoughts on it? Now, I was pretty shocked to be honest. I thought they were going to go defense for sure. Maybe Ruben Foster. Obviously, you know he had some hiccups. Yeah, you were along high on Ruben Foster. Now, you know, I was thinking Ruben Foster with perfect. You know, imagine that defense. Now, when I think of John Ross, 
I think of a burner. I mean, obviously, if he gets out in space, no one's going to catch him. You know, um, I you know positive traits, a return game, point and kick returns. You know, he'll help that way. Right. You know, uh, he's not in college. I watched him last year. He wasn't just a straight one right down the field. I yeah. mean, he could run other routes. He right, said right. that wasn't perfect, or like he kind of run his own thing. Right, but, but he has go, the you know, playmaking ability to do that. Now, the best I, I would give him give the Bengals a B. The best player that I think. John Rasky B is maybe a faster and overall, uh, let's say, not better, but maybe sexier type of Deshaun Jackson. Obviously, T.Y. Hilton, too, that comes yeah. to mind. Now, if John Rasky becomes the next Tavon Austin, where little guy gets banged up, can only really run one round. Then that's going to be round. a huge yeah, bust. That, yeah, that, that would, would be a huge bust. bust. But, you know, another thing that I take in consideration is John Ross is his – Biggest task at hand in his whole college career, semifinals against Alabama. He's going against, you know, NFL caliber cornerbacks. Mm -hmm. He had five catches for 28 yards and then a stripped fumble. Now, you know, I don't know if he was injured that game or what, but that just did not impress me now thinking about that. But, yeah. you know, on the... He has the upside, too. If, the upside. Andy Dalton, if Andy Dalton can get him the ball... And let's not forget, when I compare him to T.Y. Hilton, T.Y. Hilton oh, yeah. was the receiving leader last year. I mean, T.Y. Hilton's not going to give you a touch, a lot of touchdowns, but he gets you consistently 100 yards a game or can go close to 200. I mean, that's going to solidify that offense of wide receiver core with Eifert and A.J. Green as well. Yeah. Uh, and then the big one, the Chiefs moving up. From the 25th pick, I believe it was. Uh, I'm not quite sure if that one was. But they move up to get Patrick Mahomes, which was a surprise to a lot of people. I don't think people were more surprised by this than Trubisky. But I think some people were still saying this is a bad pick for the Chiefs because they're going to develop him for a year or two. Yeah. And especially with Andy Reid. Now, I can see why Andy Reid wants to do it because he knows that at some point... Alex Smith is not going to be there, and they need to move on from the conservative stuff. But I still do think they could have done a lot better job of some of getting somebody else different. But I do admire the pick, wanting to develop the guy. I, I feel like it. you know a Texas Tech offense where it's just run and gun, you know, slinging it all over the field. I don't know if that really translates well to the NFL. Now, obviously, to go all the way up and draft him, they have to think. You know, he's uh, next, what I don't know what type of quarterback he is, but they must be really high on him. It, it shocked me, but you know, time will tell. Mm -hmm, so. Right. And uh, I know that we're getting a little long on time. I will do a part two of this video. We're going to make one, and then we'll make a second one uh, after this to go over the second half of this. Uh, a lot of the picks that we have are in the top 15. That's why we're going into more depth on it. Uh, the Saints getting Marshawn Lattimore. My friend Toby's loving that. It's a great, solid pick. Uh, very good at corner. I give that an A-. minus. I'm sure you would agree, too. It's done. Yeah. Uh, Texans, Deshaun Watson. And, you know, as much as I hate that, I hate this pick for two reasons. One, he should have gone earlier than these two other quarterbacks. Three, second, because he's Goals in my conference. Yeah, I have to year. face him now. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping he doesn't turn out to be quite as good. But... You got to think this morning he's probably turning over in his bed saying I'm so thankful to be a Texan right now because you'd look at it he could have gone to the Bears that's a terrible situation could have gone to the Chiefs probably would have been the best situation but you're going to a team that has the best defense has the potential to be an upside on the offense I mean you're looking at a, a Texans team that could run the division with the Colts for the next 10 years with this guy. You look at his wideouts, obviously you have DeAndre Hopkins, mm -hmm. you have Fuller, and you know, Braxton, Braxton Miller is healthy. I mean, he has some tools, mm -hmm. you know, I, he has the defense too, and I, it's not like, you know, the AFC South is a gauntlet of a... Yeah, you know, right, division. of the division. Yeah, it's like, you know, with the Colts is their only competition, really, because the Tennessee Titans are up there, but I feel like they're they need a little bit more yeah. before I they're can start to away. say a couple years. Yeah. All right. So Cardinals getting Hassan Reddick. I think that was a solid pick for them. Solidified that the front. Uh, I give that an A. I think uh, 
his draft stock increased a lot recently because of his combine numbers. Uh, former walk on, former walk on too. He's and, and that's the amazing part. A walk on from a, a team that he we didn't even think he, we didn't even heard of him, and now all of a sudden he's top fifteen in the NFL. Like he is literally. The classic definition of you can do anything if you set your mind to it, right. which is great. Uh, the Eagles pick. My dude Nick loved this pick. We actually <laughs> both have a video of him going absolutely nuts, getting Derek Barnett, defensive end out of Tennessee. And a lot of people thought Derek Barnett was a better pass rusher and a better overall player than Miles Garrett because of – you look at his three-year career – 31 sacks in a, a three-year career and all these other things like it's crazy to think that but when you look at the stats Derek Barnett is very interesting Barnett I think is a better overall football player than Garrett he had more SEC sacks he was more productive than that just overall now Garrett had what eight and a half sacks last year four and a half was against San Antonio Texas Obviously, Barnett wasn't the same athlete as Garrett. I think that's he's not you know, the like same athlete. But when you look at a pure football player oh, at yeah. his position, he might be the best pure defensive end in his. He's not a great in the in the rush. That's that's the one thing that they knocked on him. But his passing, his ability to get to the passer is something to be admired. Yeah. And so this is the last pick we'll cover here. My Indianapolis Colts. And getting Malik Hooker, the safety out of Ohio State. I must say I'm shocked because a lot of people say this man should have gone first over Jamal Adams. I think the only reason he did not is because of his injuries in the offseason before the combine. And that's why it, when he didn't get to go to the combine, they didn't get to see his numbers. I would have thought he would have gone over Jamal Adams. But golly, am I impressed with this. Like Chris Ballard said, whoever's the best available player we're going to get, we're going to get him. It doesn't matter what his position is. Sure enough, surprising as it was, he was still there. And he is a guy that you can compare to Ed Reed. Has ball hawk skills like no one else. And I've heard people say he's the best safety that has ever probably come out of college football. He's getting compared to Ed Reed. Quickness, versatility, being able to pick the ball off like nobody else's business, and to think this kid only played one year. He's still got potential. I the only reason I give this an A minus and not an A plus is because I thought we were I did not expect this to get a safety. I did not expect that. That's the only reason I don't give this an A plus. Other than that, I'm happy with it. His missed tackles is what the big people think of, but People people bring that way out of proportion. A lot of people miss tackles. And especially in the open field when it is very tough to make tackles there. I think you work on that in the offseason. Oh, yeah. And then it's he's going to help solidify a weak Colts secondary. I give this an A+. Plus. If you're getting a guy that everyone keeps on saying is the next Ed Reed, Ed Reed's the best safety of all time. Yeah, so right. So obviously, if you're getting a guy that could be the next Ed Reed, it's an A+. Plus. Obviously, yeah. We're not I mean, saying he's going to be, but when you get compared to Ed Reed, you know you've got something special. I just think he's I think he's the best safety in the draft. I know Jamal Adams, you know, might be – he's a good football player, but Malik Hooker, he's just going to take away the deep threat. You know, you look at your league – Deshaun Watson, you're talking. Deshaun Watson, I'm gonna get intercepted by you know Malik Hooker. Hooker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Be ready, Deshaun. Be ready for that. I, you know, I feel like this is an amazing pick. I obviously it was probably medical, but the fact that he dropped down to what was it to 15? When he, Are you when most me? mock drafts oh. had him in the he top was, ten, he was a top five pick. I thought. You yeah, know, for so. a lot of them. Yeah. And so one more thing here, uh, the 16th pick, Ravens getting Marlon Humphrey. I think that's a good, uh, solid pick. Marlon Humphrey had a big issue with, um, with basically guarding man to man was his biggest issue. But he had numbers in the defense with an already good Alabama defense. I think he goes to a great team that has the Ravens, who were a top ten defense last season. I think he's going to make great moves. So we're gonna end this video with give me your best pick of the first sixteen. 
worst pick of the first 16. Just straight up. Okay, best pick. Oh, for sure, Malik Hooker. Malik Hooker, okay. The draft. All no, right, there, there we go. go. I have my man's he already over here. Top five, top ten pick. Worst pick. You know, I'm going to go with Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs just because I didn't even think he – I thought he might have even been there in the 20s. I didn't think the Chiefs really needed a draft up all the way to 10. Yeah. Now – I can see where you know. you're coming from with that. I can see where you're coming from with it. Uh – I'd have to agree with you on the hooker thing. Uh, and as as much as I agree with you on the Patrick Mahomes thing, I can't help but think Mitchell Trubisky. Because, because the Chiefs have a plan. The Chiefs have a plan for him. They're going to develop him because he needs some work, obviously, with his throwing mechanics. But he has the potential. You wasted three picks and a lot of millions to get Mitch Trubisky for a player that probably won't play his first year. It's like, it just makes no sense to me on that. Uh, I, I, I don't get it. Uh, so, in this next video, we'll go over the uh, back 16 of the NFL Draft. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about um, some of the big ones. And we will uh, give our predictions on who we might get picked up in the second round. And until next video, guys. Peace.